everyone. Watch till the end of the video for a surprise. I'll see you there. Story by you slash almost jaded. So my wife died years ago, and every Sunday, I smell her perfume. Seems like that's how this usually goes. Twice now, our apartment will suddenly smell overwhelmingly like my cologne for about half an hour to an hour, and then it just vanishes as fast as it came. Not sure if it's paranormal or glitch or what, but it's very weird, and it's really starting to get to me. My girlfriend and I rent the entire basement of a house. Two large bedrooms, and we use one as our living room. There's a bathroom and a hallway area between them all. Our roommate slash landlord is almost never home and only ever comes downstairs to either go out to the garage or go into the laundry room at the bottom of the stairs. He hasn't been around any of the times that this happened. I wear only one kind of cologne. It's been my trademark scent for over 20 years. Givenchy Xerius Rouge, not exactly common, and a very distinct scent. After I got COVID, one of the unfortunate side effects was a minor change in my sense of taste and smell that seems to be permanent now. Very little change overall, but specifically, my favorite cologne now smells awful to me. Like, it's rancid, and at one point, I bought a new bottle because I thought that the one that I had had gone bad. But the new bottle smells the same. Everyone else around me says it's still the same scent, so I keep it around because the women in my life love it. But I hardly wear it anymore because to me, it smells awful now. And now I have a near empty bottle and a brand new bottle. The first time it happened, my girlfriend and I were both in the bedroom, the door open, and we're the only ones down here. Suddenly, there was a very strong smell. She says she didn't see me put cologne on, and I say that I didn't too. I get up, and it's much stronger in the hall than bathroom. The new bottle is on a dresser in the bedroom, but the old one is in the bathroom. Maybe it broke. I went to go and find it. And it's not broken, not wet, not leaking, not even a strong smell from the bottle itself. The smell is cloyingly strong in the hallway. I go grab the new bottle, completely intact, also no indication of leakage or use. We both comment on the weirdness, and then just as fast as it came on, it's gone. No more smell. It happened again just now today. And it's definitely my cologne. It smells strange and vaguely rancid to me and woodsy and sexy to her. No question that it's the Juventus Xerius Rouge. It comes on strong and all at once, it's gone. It's much stronger in the hallway and bathroom and it goes away just as fast after 30 to 45 minutes or so. So now that I write this, it's fading. I can't quite get my head around being haunted by my own ghost, so I really don't know what to make of this. By AAS Lanes This happened back in March a couple months ago. It was two days after daylight savings. These events all happened within a span of 20 minutes. I would also like to preface that I had plenty of sleep that night. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I wake up at 6.30am for my commute to college an hour away. I was packing up my car for the day. I had my headphones in but nothing was playing because the headphone jack was ripped out by my hoodie. Suddenly, I hear this awful static noise and this voice yell my name. However, it was so loud and near it sounded like it came from my headphones. I automatically freak out. I look around and search for who could have said it but came up empty. Eventually, I started my commute. I have to take an exit to get on the highway. I live in a somewhat rural place so the exit is pretty long and there's nothing around so you get a clear view of the sky. 
I have driven this way hundreds of times before, so I knew the way pretty well. However, since daylight savings happened, it was actually light out and was sunny and bright. Then I blinked, and it was cloudy with no sunlight. The type of dark I should have had my headlights on for. I get this overwhelming sense of dread and I felt myself freeze up staring at the sun. I blinked again and it was back to sunny and normal. I freak out and think I'm losing my mind. I continue to stare at the sun thinking it would change again. Then I hear the voice seal my name again, like it wasn't near me but in my head. It shocked me out of my frozen state and I jumped and I yanked my steering wheel on impulse. I lose control and I slide into the ditch. Someone was driving down my exit, which they shouldn't have been because it was one way. I was going at least 60 miles per hour, and I have no doubt the other car was too. I have no idea what this means. The change of sky distracted me and almost caused an accident, but the voice saved me? Warned me? I still have no idea what this means. Story by you slash Kiwi Orange Banana About two years ago, I was on holiday with a few friends. We were staying at a seaside cottage with one of my friend's family. One night, us friends went out for dinner and then planned to come back to the cottage to meet the family to have some drinks and play cards. We arrived back to the cottage and nothing seemed particularly out of the ordinary. There was a large enough sitting room and the entire group of eight were seated on different seats or standing around the room. We were discussing dinner and talking about the food, all very relaxed and comfortable. Myself and my friend were sat on a one-seat sofa at the very edge of the room. It's here when we both noticed what initially looked to be a spider hanging from a web. We couldn't see the web. But it looked to be a black bug that was just floating in thin air. So, we assumed it was a spider. I don't particularly like spiders, and I began floating the air around the spider so that it would climb up its web. It didn't move, not even a little bit. So instead, I tried to slice the air above and around the spider, aiming to get the web and perhaps move the spider to a different location while it's holding its web. This is when we realized that there was no web. Nothing was holding the spider in place. We looked at each other confused, and even though I am afraid of spiders, I reached out and touched the little spider-looking black mass that was still floating in the same spot and moving. I would never normally touch bugs, but at this stage, I was tripping, a bit confused. And once I touched this black bug, it started flying. It was a fly, not a spider, and this fly was suspended in the air, wings not moving, stuck. My friend and I remember this so clearly as by the law of physics, how can a fly be still in the air without moving? It's something that we could never explain. Around that time, I saw TikTok glitches, other objects and things suspended in the air, and I am sure that this is the case for this unflying fly. Does anybody have any idea what it could have been? By Rustin Spencer Cole when I was 23, turning 24, in my neighbourhood there was this white Ford LTD made in the 70s parked beside a house on one of the streets all the time. I walked by it frequently as I went for my daily walks in the neighbourhood. One night I was walking to work, I worked at a restaurant as a server, at around midnight, and I saw the white Ford LTD 70s style car driving slowly ahead in the neighbourhood along a row of houses. Behind it was a police car. As I turned around the corner onto this street in the neighbourhood, watching this white car with neon blue high beams, I experienced it flash its lights burning into my eyes. Suddenly, as the light just disappeared, the car had completely vanished, and only the police car was there, moving forward. I looked at the cop car and wanted to go up to the officer and ask him where the car went, 
that I was worried he'd think I'm nuts and high on something and possibly arrest me. Days later, I was still unable to process what happened, and I didn't want to think about it because I could not explain it. I do not do drugs, except marijuana five times between 15 and 18, and I do not drink except once or twice a year and never get drunk. I don't have schizophrenia or see things. I try not to think about it. Perhaps it was a hallucination, but I've never hallucinated before. The only thing I could say was that it was a phantom car or time traveller, or perhaps a glitch in the simulation if we're talking about the paranormal. Funny thing is, here's the kicker, that white car that always parked there beside the house. I've never seen it ever again during my daily walks around the neighbourhood. Another more modern car is now parked there. I just try not to think about it. Story by U slash Accomplished Bus 1375 I live near a large river. There are two docks on either side of a boat ramp and a park with picnic tables. A few days ago, it was sunny and cool and I went out to look at the water. The day was picturesque with one cute little blue and white sailboat about 30 feet from the dock. A few other people were at the park watching the boat and the calm waters. I readied my phone, looked through the phone camera lens, and the boat vanished. My eyes saw a boat, but my camera would not pick it up. I was shocked and kind of mad. The boat was in plain sight, and I assumed everybody else could see it. But like a vampire with no reflection, the boat had no camera presence. I checked my phone, and I tried different angles. I even tried walking up the pier. And I began to get frustrated. My phone was in perfect shape and it took pictures of everything but the boat. Just for clarity, when I say lake, meaning the entire lake-shaped section, technically it's a large river. The area on either side of the boat showed up, but where the boat was, was only water. I switched to video mode and made a two-minute film of the entire lake, and the audio of it has me verbally describing the boat. But the video is just an empty lake. I don't understand it, and it was so frustrating. By Konosu This is going to be a short one, but this occurrence happened about, I'd say, six or seven months ago while I was heading home from a family vacation. We stopped at a rest area somewhere in Alabama to let our dogs out and to head to the bathroom ourselves, and I was left in charge of the dogs while everyone else went in, so when my turn came around, I walked or ran in pretty fast. This is when I first spotted the disappearing man. He was this older guy with a cane, and the only reason I noticed him was because of the bright green jacket he had on. Well, I walked past him while he was on a bench, and I had turned around because the green caught my eye, and he was gone. Sure, he could have gotten up fast, maybe he was just a fast old dude I didn't know, so I headed in and used the bathroom. So when I finish in the bathroom, I'm walking out and I see the same guy walking in front of me out the doors. I look down at my phone and when I look up, the guy is gone. I sped up and looked out the doors left and right to see if I could spot him, but he was completely gone, out of nowhere. One of the weirdest experiences I've had, really. It may not seem like much, but it was quite odd. Story by you slash Better Luna My mom and I love to go camping. We usually go with her best friend, Rosie. That's a fake name. This was maybe three years ago. But every spring we used to take road trips, usually spanning over a week that would lead us to our final destination, Zion. This one particular trip would also happen to be the last trip that we took, since life kinda got in the way. Halfway through our trip, we decided that we wanted to go visit the local stores in the area to look at all the crystals and other stones that were sold for a much lower price than back home. And in order to get there, we had to travel a specific highway. 
Apparently, this particular highway is known for passing either through or near a very strong vortex that people have experienced last time. Personally, I didn't really believe in that stuff and it was mostly my mom and Rosie who were interested in those stories. So, we load up the directions to this store and from our campsite, it would take us 2.5 to 3 hours to reach it. We decided to leave at 1.30 after we ate lunch and arrive at around 4 with no traffic, which gave us plenty of time to shop and grab some grub before the ride back to the campsite. I usually sleep during those rides while the gals chatted up, but this time, I was wide awake and just watching the endless road pass by. So we're driving, having a good time, when we hear, In X miles, your destination will be on the right. Immediately, we go quiet. We hadn't been on the road long, maybe an hour and a half, and we're thinking we're going crazy. No way we reached the shop. No freaking way 2.5 hours had gone by. We look at the time on our phones, watches, and cars, and it all read the same. 3 p.m. We didn't pass any place that would warrant a time zone change. My phone, which I left on airplane mode to save battery from no reception, read the same time as well. So we park, and no one says anything. What the hell just happened? There was an hour and a half of missing time unaccounted for. My mom barely had a bar of reception and was able to look up the directions to our campsite and sure enough, it was a 2.5 hour drive. Despite how punctual we are when we are on a road trip, we tried to play it off. Oh, maybe we misread when we left and we left earlier than we thought, but we each sent messages that were timestamped around the same time of departure at 1.30. We are really freaked out, so we just try to ignore what just happened and go to the shop and continue what we planned for that day. When it's time to go home, we grab some food and load up the directions, and we paid very close attention to the time we left. We take the same highway, same directions, in the same road conditions back to the campsite, and sure enough, it took us 2.5 hours to get back. We ended up going back to that store before driving back home, and it took us 2.5 hours to get there. We still don't know what happened in the hour and a half that we lost. Story by you slash Nipnopples so, today I was in my kitchen. I live in a small loft and the smallest bedroom is like three feet from the edge of the island counter in my kitchen. I saw my two-year-old walk from down the hallway, where I had last seen her, and into my daughter's room. I literally watched her for several seconds as she walked in my line of sight, into the room, and then out of my line of sight. Something seemed off, but I was distracted with my task, I just immediately told my 13-year-old, Hey, a toddler in your room, so she could check it out. My 13-year-old was in the living room, which is joined to the kitchen area, so it didn't take but 20 seconds for her to get into her bedroom. She was like, Uh, toddler isn't in here. So, we checked together and the toddler was in her little bed that's in my room at the end of the hall, just vibing. But then it hit me. What was wrong? Toddler was wearing a pink footless zip-up sleeper today, and when I saw her, she was wearing a teal blue sleeper with popsicle print that she wears often. Being distracted, it didn't really click. Also, weirdly enough, she's a heavy walker, and when I saw her a minute before, she made no sound, which is probably why I noticed something was off. 
She also seemed like her being was slightly muted color-wise, and it seemed like a soft image, almost normal, but slightly faded like a camera filter. Enough for me to notice that something was weird, but not instantly notice what, while I was distracted. This was broad daylight, by the way, and I wasn't seeing things wrong. I even saw her smile a little. I saw her clearly, but it wasn't her. I've got no idea what to do with this, and I have no history of hallucinations and etc. I'm not having a mental breakdown, nor am I sleep deprived. Everything else is mostly normal. However, this event did remind me that three or so weeks ago, my 13-year-old was home alone and that she heard my toddler giggle in the living room, even though we weren't home. Not many kids live in my building, but a few do, so I brushed it off as her mistaking someone in the hall for my kiddo. But now, I'm not so sure. Story by you slash pigs and ponies My partner, my one-year-old and I, were in the kitchen eating our dinner this evening. And my partner and I got onto the topic of strange events that have happened in our lives. My partner mentioned having a dream four years ago where he saw a kitchen and a child that he didn't recognize. And at that time, he thought it was his niece, but had deja vu tonight and realized that it was our child and kitchen. And we were discussing how odd that was. I then said how I felt there's definitely unexplainable things out there and mentioned odd occurrences in my job as a nurse with dying patients and also in my old job working in a medieval museum where me and other staff saw weird things in the corner of our eyes. It had even been visited by multiple mediums who all felt that the museum was haunted. My partner then said that he wondered if those occurrences happened to certain people and if some were more receptive than others. But as he said this, a pound coin flew over him and landed on the floor between us. It stinks of mold and is a fairly recent coin. There was nowhere it could have fallen from, and neither of us had knocked anything that it could have come off. We also rarely have coins and pay for most things with our card, so it was just generally odd. There was no one else on the house, apart from the cat who was in the next room and doesn't tend to throw money at us. So, yeah, that was a bit weird. Story by you slash that click candy. Okay, now me and my sister write what we call stories. It's our getaway from our actual life. We make up characters and write them going on little adventures. Sometimes... If some drama is happening in our life, we put ourselves into certain stories and make us live out our dream life with our family. It all seemed well and good until we started making things happen. For instance, we are not psychopaths by any mean, but we do like to make it interesting. So in the story in, I think, 2011, we made our aunt and uncle get into a car accident. Fast forward to 2021, and they get into a car accident. That's a one-off, we thought. But then, it got weirder. We were trying to figure out a guy that we could possibly let our cousin be with that we made up in a story. So, we just looked at each other and said, Eh, let's name the guy Josh. Fast forward a couple of years, Lo and behold, she gets with a Josh. We know it doesn't snow or have any snowstorms or blizzards here in Texas, so we thought it would be funny and interesting 
to put a snowstorm slash blizzard into our stories with us in Texas because, I mean, it wouldn't really do that in Texas, right? Wrong. February 2021. The Great Texas Snowstorm Apocalypse Happens Then some people that we break up in the stories break up in real life even though their real life relationships were going so well. But we did it in our stories to make it seem interesting. Am I going crazy? Like, am I looking too much into this? Again, me and my sister are not insane by any means. Everyone in our family knows we do it and even tells us to be careful in what we put in our stories now. I can't tell if they're joking or if they're being serious. This originally and still is a way for me and my sister to escape the drama that is going on in our life. It's a lot of fun, but I almost feel scared to make anything dramatic happen anymore. And here are the top comments for my last video. Welcome to Miss Creepy Tales Riddle Time. If you know the answer, feel free to leave it in the comments. And the winner gets to be featured in the next video. What is the place where people are dying to get an entry? Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you can also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember... Your fear feeds me.